Yeah, we on boss talk. Yes, one yes, yes, time. indeed. Yeah, we gon' talk. We gon' have fun. We be on fire. We be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my day of all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, you name it. Threads. It, just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101 on every platform. Just Google us. You'll find it. Everything will pop up. But anyway, if you want to see our visuals, definitely go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. And not only subscribe, but we want your membership. How you find a membership under each and every video in the description section. Just click description. You'll see where it says join our membership here. Click that link and it takes you all through the steps. Thank you in advance. Y'all always say well, you love what we do when you see us on the streets. So that's how you support us. Join our membership. Thank you. Hey, man, listen, man. We got a guy in here today, y'all, by way of... Is it North or South Carolina? North Carolina? Man, North Carolina. North Carolina is in the building. Yes, Stand sir. up, y'all. This guy on. right here, man. When we first took off, man, this guy, we just over over a strange relationship. He calls <laughs> me out of the blue. He tells me he loved Boss Talk 101. He loved what he's seeing. We did not know we would become great friends, man. And ever since then, we've kept in touch. He flew in on his own dime yeah. and came and said, I want to be on Boss Talk 101, man. He had a lot going on then. He has a lot going on now. We're about to get into it, man. Archivius Armstrong is in the building. You already know, man. Listen, without further ado, it's a blessing to be back on the show, to see you guys like family to me, man. To see you guys put a big smile on my face when I walk through those doors, man. <laughs> so again, I appreciate you for giving this, this opportunity to get on this platform, man, to share the the information and what God has me doing out here in these uh, streets and the lives and and what he's doing with the gift that he gave me, brother. Thank man, you. Man, great, great to have you, man. Thank you so much, man. Um, man, you know, like a lot has been going on since you left here, man. Oh, it's man. been it's been about a year or so. A little over a year. A little over a year. year. Almost, two almost two years. years. Almost two years. That's yeah. how long we've been here. So he came early. Oh yeah. early, early. On. Um yeah. I just wanna say, man, we've seen a lot of different things going on, man. You know, um back during those days was early stages, I think. One of our main things was back then still was helping, you know, trying to be there for the children and mm -hmm. all that, doing stuff. I know you came, Miss King came on the yes. show with you. A shout out to Miss King. Back Absolutely. Then. She was dealing with the juveniles and we, me, her, Charleston White early on was dealing right. with the juveniles. And so they say. Go ahead. No, no, he was. <laughs> I, I was with right, him right, right. early on. Right. It, it, it was something different early on. Right, right. It, it ain't the same thing that you see today yeah when you well just let's get into it but, charleston white like like what do you think about what's your perception of him versus when you were going because i was set to set you, you guys up. up you were setting it up um well you know um i think that at the early beginning of what you was doing with boss talk 101 and um you knew about what i was doing and i think upon arrival you was like i know this gentleman who was doing what you doing y'all doing the same thing and i i just think that you guys need to get on the um the podcast man and, and just share your ideas and i think you you had reached out to Miss King. Matter of fact, I reached out to Miss King and let her know I was in town. So, you know, I don't leave to Tuesday. I would love to come in the detention, detention center and, uh, you know, hopefully I can speak with the young men. But um, I don't have a bad will, but, you know, you're talking about somebody who is a actually community and youth advocate in real life, in real time. Um, and he's standing on that. Um, my receipts and, and, and my impact and, and the people who, who represents me and what I do back at home in Charlotte can vouch for that. Um, most importantly, you know what I mean? Um, again, everybody to each his own. Um, but I think when you was trying to get that uh, connection to happen, I, I was more resistance because, you know, I wanted to see what this, this Charleston White individual was about. And it, it just didn't, it didn't meet the standards of when I say youth advocate, being the example for the youth, being an example in the community, I didn't see that. But you know, it's a whole, like I said, it's a whole different circus now. So, and he's still, to my to my knowledge, is still saying he's in the communities and like, you know, wait a minute, man. And so, you know, I got some people in Charleston, South Carolina, who's connected with him and, you know, saying Archivius, man, you need, I'm like, no, no, no. This is real work we doing over here. And so, you know, somebody like myself who's been in the community but been a part of the streets, I know what a, an example look like. That's not an example that we need to show our kids, man. Wow. I, I want to go back a little bit because when you were here, you know, there were some flooring statements made for us from what you had been through in your past experience as, right. as a young man. 
from prison to all type of different things, right. from uh, molestation, everything that you was you was talking about back then, sharing you know the fact of what God has brought you through. Right. You know, I thought it was an extraordinary thing to see the, the development of your character and the way that God had changed your life. You right. know what I mean? Absolutely. So it was just a blessing to hear your story, and it was a comfort to know that 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 God was taking. You you know this type of individual and saying I'm going to use you on this side to show other children, other young men that may be going through these experiences right. the way. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you know, brother, you had reached out to me a few times. You're like archive archivist man, like like we need to get you back down here and do something in the community. Um, and that's not that's not just something that you you took a lightning in just because of the interview or the story. No, you seeing the work yeah. and you're seeing that. It, like I said, on social media, you're seeing it in, in other aspects through our social media influence and, and, and avenues that we use to promote it. But absolutely, I was a kid, you know, when we talk about um, our generation today, I was that young man, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like I shared my story last time. I was that young man who who fought through the system. You know what I mean? I didn't just get in the system at at, at, at 20 some years old, no, I was birthed through it. Foster homes, group homes, detention centers, training school, state prison and federal prison. But to be in the, in a place and in a, and on a platform that I have right now, you know, I'm changing lives. You know what I mean? Our programs are in five schools back in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's proven fact. We have two different counties that we provide um, mentoring and, and tutoring to um, that's a proven fact. Um, we, we're sitting in these meetings with the city council and, and the, uh, uh, the, the educational board and, and all these other opportunities that we are getting support. That's a proven fact. But how did a person like myself end up in a situation where he's doing what he's doing? I had to realize what, what my second chance was, was helping and giving back that time, not only that time, but those experiences that I encounter, um, what did I learn from it? And so I didn't just wanna just go back in schools or mentor kids just telling a story. We had, to, we had to create a system and a curriculum that was something that we can teach and educate our kids with, giving them career path, showing them uh, college tours, business and trades, financial literacy, um, you know what I mean? Just so many opportunities and, and exposure to, to the youth that they would never got the opportunity to even see or get a chance to uh, experience. It's a proven fact that we're doing that. And so, um, again, when, when coming out here and getting the opportunity to share that with somebody who, like you, I told you when I spoke with you, I said, man, you've been standing You've been standing on that business and, and what you believe in from day one. You never switch. You never you never try to you know I me mean, waver. You know what I mean? You ain't been straddling the fence. You've been a hundred percent in your lane. And I think that's what makes you guys, you and Miss Jamaica, so authentic to bring people who is genuine. They're not looking for views. They're looking to share their stories. And that's what I feel like when you talk about boss talk, you know what I mean? We're giving you that platform to share your stories and your experiences. Man, I, I definitely uh definitely wanna, you know, keep keep the, the the same, you know, consistency, you know. The word of God say, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. Therefore you're not consumed. Right. You so so when you understand that he's the same today, yesterday and forever. Forever. When you see that you standing on that type of foundation, then you have to line yourself up. Mm. You're trying to be a better person. Right. You're trying to every day trying to be that 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 person that 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 you thriving to be through who you read about right. when you're a follower right. like I am. Right. So at the end of the day, I think that's what's kept our journey the way mm -hmm. it's been. Also, the fact of reading, like I say, praying wow. with my wife, um, asking her is she okay. We sending each other notes and letters to say, are you okay? Wow. Looking out for each other, having each other's back, and then, you know, being here in front of these cameras. Right. It's nothing to us because we're just being who we are. You know what I mean? And that's what makes you different. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with because a lot of people are trying to find their way and they're willing to jump in every lane and whoever platform. But you guys said this is the lane we paved and this is what we're what we're creating and you guys can come over here. We don't have to go over here, go over here. I've watched you just in two years grow. And you know, went from now you went from a pl a place where it was local to international, like platforms. You ain't listen. The thing that's beautiful about what you guys are doing, um, you've stepped out on faith, and in what you've shown people, chase your dreams. It don't have to have an age limit to it or age cap to it. You have so many people in this industry um, doing what you guys are doing. It's a much younger crowd. You guys saying, listen, we can be what we do, what we are to everybody 
and not have to change. And that's the problem. Sometimes God will give you that platform to see if you change. Like you said, he don't change. You change. I'm going to bless you. Let's see if you can still be, you know what I mean, what, I, what, what, what you say you are. Because that's what a lot of people, they change when they get a little fame. You guys, I mean, you guys have gotten that. You know what I mean? I've seen that growth, but you understand the same. Humble. Yeah. You're very humble. Well, I thank God for it, man. It's because, I guess, when you've been through so much and you've had those experiences, the ups and the downs, Come you know, yeah. coming from a, a, a background that, like, I've, I've experienced a lot. And yeah. I thank God for all my trying times. Mm -hmm. Those are the times that really pretty much make us who we are today. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've had a lot of different things to happen to transition here, you know, um, since, you know, like I said, you was here last time. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of different people who, who've been on this platform um, from Ice-T to Bun B to who else, babe? Uh, a lot of Faison. short, Faison, Faison. Uh, uh, a lot of artists and Cotton, comedians. You know, um, Jesse the comedian, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Mingo, Carlos. I mean, y'all doing y'all so, thing now. So the reason, and that's just God. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, just putting us in the midst of everybody. The Chico Beans, like we are in the midst of these people because we're supposed to be a light that shines in dark. Come on, bro. you know what I'm saying? And this platform was put here so that people can see that you can be married for 20 years and, yeah. and still do it and look at each other not only during during the day during the night work together yeah. there's no excuses that's yeah. all we're saying you yep. know we're trying to figure this thing out as we go there was no book written nah. to, to relationships and raising your kids right right but you know some people uh they don't know how to do it it's not it's not something that they're shown or given the example what it what it looks like to be married because they're not they're not raised in those type of environments and so you look at positive male influence is something that I feel like it need to be more of you know everybody has a voice but not everybody is 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 skilled nor qualified at that point where you're able to give that advice because it depends on who's receiving that because you can you can hear something from a homeless person and you you may not receive it because who are you to give me advice on how my life should be and you're at your worst mm -hmm. but even in the Bible it says I mean the, a message will come through a peasant from a peasant uh, one of my greatest lessons came from a homeless person s digging in a garbage can. But, you know what I mean? Which I, was what? Um, his, uh, never devalue who you are. And I tell that, I tell that story often where um, he asked, could he drive my car off one day? And I was like, no, but the, the spirit convicted me. It was like, no, let him drive your car off. You know, when you have that spiritual connection, <laughs> you feel something, you hear something. Um, you can't explain it, but you know that was nothing but God. And, and he said, let him drive your car off and, and everything that's in your pocket, give it to him. And, um, and that was a life lesson um, when, I got, when he got finished drying it off I said what you think I owe you and he looked at me and he looked at the car and he said a hundred dollars <laughs> and I said to myself like I mean I don't know what you feel like why do you think that drying off my car was worth a hundred dollars and but you know I remember what the word told me said give him everything that's in your pocket and I remember um pulling out one bill at a time you know what I mean the first two bills was like two fives and no I'm sorry the first four bills were four dollars and I handed it to him and I said is that enough and he looked at it he was like no and he kept his hand and I said keep coming and um every bill I pulled out you know what I mean maybe it was a five or a ten or a twenty he just said keep coming mm -hmm. he did not say thank you and going about his business but I pulled out everything in my pocket and he asked for a hundred dollars it was ninety four dollars he ended up with I didn't remember what I had in my pocket but I knew I had money that's why the, the spirit said one thing but the body the flesh <laughs> the flesh was like, nah, I'm gonna give you a couple of dollars. But the spirit said, nah, give him everything. Mm -hmm. And um, but you know, Did he, he said thank you. He said thank you, but I told him thank you. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like God would test you. God will put put you up to. Listen, He's not gonna test you if He know that you can't. You know what I mean? Pass the test. We don't pass the test because we rely on our own spiritual mind. Not all, I mean our own uh, uh will, our own mental, and and how we feel from a spiritual standpoint. And so when I told him I needed that more than you think you needed that money, because as a speaker, as a contractor, as a coach, um, as a as a construct, I mean contractor. You know, we get contracts, we get bids, and sometimes we want that bid so bad, we're willing to reduce our prices to the point to where I just want that money because I need that money, but not realizing, listen, never devalue your worth. Mm -hmm. He stood on what he felt what his worth was, and he got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because again, I could have gave him $4, he could have gone about his business. But he ended up, he knew what he said his worth was, and he got it. Mm -hmm. But that day, 
I end up selling like three hundred over three hundred something books. A school order like almost four hundred wow. books that came evening. Right back. It came. I mean, come on. It was like f almost four grand that they end up spending with me, and I was obedient to God and gave ninety four dollars. Right. So you know, I mean, and again, just stand true to who you are. There's been so many opportunities for me to to mess up this blessing, and that's what a lot of people a lot of people don't realize. The devil know how to bless you too, because we lack patience. We, 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 we don't want to go through the storm. We just want to, we just want to endure it, go through until we could take just enough. Mm -hmm. But God said, I need you to stand. And so we, we, we have to understand when God tell us something, it's on his time, not our time. The devil know how to bless you too. Wow. When you look at all, I, I remember back, I, I say some years back, you know, when Eric Thomas first came on the scene, Les Brown, a lot of those guys start getting real traction, you know, yeah. like, like, um, when you look at those guys today, like Eric Thomas and him, um, what do you see in, in that whole movement with, with motivational speeches? <laughs> is that, 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 is it, is it genuine? Is it organic? Is it just for the money? What are these guys doing it for now? Is Man. it really, is, is it, is it doing anything to change things? Come on E. Um, that's a great question because you know, I don't follow Eric Thomas. I don't follow Les Brown. I know who the, the individuals are. They paid the way. They done some great things. Um, I remember saying this in Atlanta maybe a year ago at a mastermind that I was a speaker at. Um, this industry is watered down, just like podcasting. Um, you have to find your lane and make it yours and be authentic. Um, everybody think they're a speaker. We've coached so many people. We've put so many people in our classes. And I've been educating people. Like, you may not be a speaker. But the thing with people is that, you know what I mean, people are watching so many people and thinking they can do it just like them. God has created us to be different. He has created all of us equal in, in, in a sense spiritually, but we're all different. Um, I'm different. So I don't, I don't, I mean, matter of fact, when I first heard about ET, I was late with it. I was like 2017, 18, 18 when I heard about it, Eric Thomas. And somebody shared a video and said, hey man, you, I thought this was you. I'm like, who was that? Well, you think about it. He came in the game. He say he was homeless. Yeah. He say he was, um, he was homeless. Uh, he couldn't, didn't know how to do his studies. I think he went to college or something like right. that. But just, just, um, just had a, Gave his backstory, and I think that was impactful. And the way he spoke yeah. touched a lot of people's lives at that time. You know, um, I remember one of the most famous speeches he had when he would talk about 50 Cent, and he would talk about, uh, I think it was Beyonce in it as well. And yeah. it was just something that was phenomenal about, about his tonality and his mm -hmm. delivery. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So, right. and at the end of the day, I mean, what is this if, we, if, if we're helping to change people's lives? is one thing it, it, whose life are you changing and what mm. change are you bringing right you know that's the whole game for me like even Les Brown like I think he was supposed to be retarded uh, mental remedial mm -hmm. or, and, and you know he was told he wouldn't make it and people just want to hear like just like your story like you mm. basically were you came up in foster homes you know you came up um, um, going into uh you know, juvenile centers where mm -hmm. you was have troubled as a as a young man, right, right? Right. And then you end up graduating and going to the big, yep. the big prisons, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So you know, this is the stuff that. And then God changed your life. At what age did He change your life? 20, 24, 25. You was twenty five. I was in federal prison when I gave my life to Christ. Wow. Yeah, I was 20, 24, 25 years old. Um, and and that's the thing. You know, we all have a story. Um, and your story is, is meant for somebody else to to overcome, to endure whatever they're enduring and just having hope. Um, you know, and that's the thing that I feel like what God gave me the second chance because of things that I experienced is going to be the very thing that's going to break the break that stronghold and, and those generational curses and those behavior patterns. In so many young men who's gone through certain things that you experience, and so I was 25, and you know, at that age, you know, I just signed a 10-year plea, and I knew I was coming towards the end of my uh, my bid at the time, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, I I got to leave out change, I can't go out the same way I came in, and so that was the very thing that I had to realize: what are you going to change about you? You ha you have you have to change you. If you don't change you, then nothing changes and everything remains the same. The only thing changes is your appearance. That's it. But the inner person is still the same. And so I I had to ask myself, what can I do 
to change me. Um, I read books and, you know, I got in certain classes to better me. But one thing I, I had a struggle with getting into was the Bible. I read so many books, but I would never read the Bible to save my life. And so how I built that, that courage to actually one day say, you know what, let me try God. It was something that a lot of brothers in prison saw in me. Um, there's a lot of great brothers in prison. And, and I always tell people, um, I've never seen nothing negative about prison. Nothing at all. Um, yes, yes, things go on in prison. But if you know how to go in and mind your business and do your time, you know what I mean, and, and, and focus on what you need to focus on with you and stay out of the other stuff, you'll be a height. How long was you in federal prison? I was in federal prison six. Six years? Yep, six. And when you first went to federal prison, you walk in, did you, do you already have been like, like in uh, county? Right, county. You had already yeah. been in the, some juvenile detention centers. Right. A lot of them, right, a for a them. long time. Mm -hmm. You, so you was like, like I said, you graduated into prison, right. federal prison. What was your case again? Um, assault with a deadly weapon and possession of cocaine. Okay, so you get there the first day. What is the experience like for you? Ready to get it over with. Um, this you knew was, you had a, a six year sentence? Yeah, I, I've already signed my 10 year plea. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so you know, my whole thing was, I've spent my whole entire life in situations like this, um, but I've never been this far away. I was in Kentucky. Um, and so being in a place where it was almost 3,000 brothers from all different places, California, Atlanta, Texas, you know, everywhere you could think of that was there. Um, a little a little piece of uncertain, like, OK, what's next? Like, how do I maneuver? And, you know, you got to You have to understand that, you know, one of the things that that separates so many people um, are involved in these these streets doing the things they're not built for that life. You know what I mean? I tell people, a lot of people, listen, on 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 camera, you look like one thing. But when you, and I'm sure you probably have dealt with this, um, with a lot of people you spoke with one-on-one uh, -on -one when the cameras go off. Social media, you look like this, but when I talk to that man or when I talk to that young lady, you get a whole different person. And so that's what you see a lot. Man, a lot of people, honestly, some people are really good people. You just made a dumb choice. Mm -hmm. Like you literally allow four minutes, five minutes, six minutes of your time in your life that just cost you 17 to 20 years. You're talking about even with me, I was facing 35 years of life at 19 and they dropped some charges and I, I plead out to 10 years. That was literally, that act took me literally less than one minute. And here it is, I done signed my life away for years for a decision. And again, I wasn't a bad kid. Anybody who've ever met me, now you would have never thought that the things that I was doing, that I was doing, because a lot of things that I was doing, you didn't see it. You heard about stuff happening, but you didn't know who was the one doing it. I was that person. And so, you know, that's the thing. I was a good kid. Honestly, I was a good kid, but I was just, I was raised and exposed to and, and, and cultivated into the wrong situations. You know, mom on drugs strung out, daddy on heroin strung out, all of my siblings, all my brothers selling drugs. So I'm in this environment. This is all we see. This is all we know. We know how to survive and that's by any means necessary. But see the things that people are talking about now, they're talking about people lifestyle that they don't live. They don't have to experience, but they, they heard about it, or they seen about it. Then when you get around people who are involved in that real street life and you get caught up, now you sitting here facing 20 years and you came from a good family. Let me ask you this, you got guys that go in there, uh, we just had Rollo, he just got out, a rapper. Um, and when he first come out, yeah. you know, he make a, of course, now everything's about when you get out if, as a rapper, yeah. they look at you and if you don't come out a certain way, you're, you're not hot. So <laughs> they're figuring out ways to be exciting They're They'll say what, what I think Rollo said something about, he could never do work with CMG after, you know, Dolph. Yeah. Demise. Right. I've seen right. that. Uh, then you got Honeycomb Brazy. He just got out and. He went in on different people, Jay Prince or whatnot. And then I don't know if they straightened it out, but they're doing things that, right. that gives you like a, it jolts the algorithm. Yeah. It's something to where they'll say this or say that or do this or do that. And boom, yeah. you know, it gets a reaction. What do you think about that? You know, um, they're not, they didn't learn a lesson. Honestly, um, you know, when you look at the Dorallos and you know how he needs to come back out like he was before he went in. You know what that says? 
I'm still that guy. And, you know, and, and nothing changes. And so when you come back out the same person that as you went in, then you didn't learn your lesson then we have to stop feeling sorry for people. We have to stop saying free certain people and allow them sit in there and get some time to think. And no, I just had this question asking me a couple of days ago because we just had a young man, 14 years old in Charlotte. There's a young person getting killed and shot at every single day in Charlotte, North Carolina. A 14 year old just got killed four, three days ago by a 19 year old. Wow. And so when, when people ask me who's somebody who's actually in the community, who's actually trying to change the mindset of our young men, who's actually trying to position them to be better men and, 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 and fathers and, and community uh, leaders and change the trajectory, it's a slap in the face to see people like Honeycomb Brazer, who, who grandmother, I believe, and grandfather who was killed because of the behaviors, only for him to come out and start in that same, you know what I mean, uh, uh, conversation, you should have left him in there. He shouldn't have never been released. You ain't learned your lesson. It's like having a child. When your child do something wrong and you punish them, you don't take them out punishment until they learn their lesson. Look at You look at Finesse two times. You look at Rollo. They're saying to the system, ain't nothing you can do to break me. But the prison system also saying when you come in here, everything is still like is the same when it was on the streets. So how are people learning a lesson if they're doing the things that they're doing? You got a, 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 a slim thug right now. He's in a situation what he's in. We have to stop feeling sorry for the ignorance. What's slim thug in? Not Slim Thug, Young Thug. Young Thug, thug. Yeah, young thug. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thug. Young Thug. You know what I mean? You got. We have to stop feeling sorry. My yeah. mom once said, and I've said this all the time, my mom used to say, I feel at peace and I can sleep when I knew you was incarcerated. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather you can be able to come see me behind a glass wearing a all brown suit than you coming to a graveyard having to speak to some dirt and a stone or wear a t-shirt. We have to stop feeling sorry for these people who is actually contributing, contributing that toxicness yeah. and, and, and that, 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 that that poison, they, they, that's what they're doing. So again, when Rollo, listen, the next, I always say, if God deliver you out of one thing, the next time it's gonna be 10 times worse. You may not make it to see prison. There's some people that you did rub the wrong way before you left. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they are gonna listen to you, you and, and here's the thing, to answer your question, people should wanna change. I didn't wanna come home from prison and go back to the lifestyle I, I once lived. I didn't want to be in that type of environment. I didn't want to be around those type of people. What will I receive coming home to people who glorify me being free, but not giving me another alternative, mm. another avenue? What lessons were, are, are, are we teaching our younger people? We talk about youth and community advocate, like even with Charleston White, when you're brandishing firearms on social media, grabbing your penis, and you're telling the F the kids, and you know, you're saying be this and be that, but you're saying that you're a youth advocate, that don't add up. That don't add up. What are we teaching our kids to become? You know what I mean? At the same time, like we say, when God... When God changes you, you have to realize he don't change, we change. Cause we get the opportunity like in the platforms. I have so many opportunities to be in on a stage and in the same environment of so many great people. I'm not choosing viral, I'm choosing impact. Now I'm not saying these platforms can't make an impact, but how I choose to use my gift, I'm very careful with that. So you can't put me a alongside of somebody saying they're a youth advocate and I'm seeing you smoking weed, you're drink, you're turning up, you're in the strip clubs, you're hanging out with people who say they're gang members and you're still active as a gang member. No, you're sending, you're sending mixed signals like that. So that's the problem with our community. They're seeing too many people on an everyday basis like that. So when you see people that comes into these schools, you're saying what you used to do, but you're still a part of what you say you used to do? No. They could see that person any day in the community. They need to hear and see it from somebody. Okay, that's different. That's different. Let me ask you another question. Uh, D1 uh, is a guy that comes on my show. I don't know if I you know you're talking about for Louisiana. D1 comes on the show, and uh, D1 was here, and then he, he had talked about Rick Ross uh, saying that God forgives and I don't on this album that he had done. He spoke of that here, but then he left. He went on Sway, and he called out... Uh, 
uh, Meek Mills for right. having some, you know, shoes that said, you know, acting as if it was reform, you yeah. know, driven, right. but then getting on uh, his music and contradicting the 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 things that he were portraying to be in the community. Right. Then he also you had uh, you had Jim Jones that was got an honorable mention. Right. And like I say, Rick Ross, Jim Jones, and. Uh, Meek Mills were the right. guys that were were pretty much in an uproar, and they came right. back and rebutted what he had said. Where do you lie when it comes down to that? Situation? I didn't see. I didn't see no lie in what he was saying. I see nothing but truth, and I think that's what a lot of people they they fail to realize is that people now are they are used to a lie. They have accepted the lie, and 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 they and they shy away from the truth because the truth supposed to hurt. The truth supposed to hurt. If I tell you about you. It don't supposed to make you feel good. So what you look at the Rick Ross, the Jim Joneses who are responding to um, D1 um, because of out of offense. And in what he's saying is not a lie. Well, some say that in these communities, they are doing things to make a difference. Bro, listen, I'm going to tell you like this. You can't you can't tell me um, here it is. We're putting programs in schools. Then one day you decide to bring a rapper who's every video brandishing firearms and every video you got naked women in your videos, every video you smoking weed, every video you talking about killing, then you allow them to go into school to say something to a young person and you think just because you have a position that you go into these schools, that's making a difference? No, you creating more of an issue than a solution. And so that's the problem. Just because you can go, Jim Jones say, hey, I pass out turkeys all the time. You, you you can give people, like these are organizations that give out thousands of turkeys. That's not nothing to give out thousands of turkeys. That's like people saying, hey, we feed the homeless every single day. You're not, you're not solving a problem. You're just giving them fuel in their stomach to go down to the next corner and hold up a sign. Can I give you a job opportunity? Can I help you with X, Y, Z if it's economic, uh, economic development, if it's helping you with your credit, if it's helping your family get out of financial situations? Like, you got to do more than say, here go a pair of shoes that I don't wear no more. Here go a jacket that costs $400 to you. you like, that's the world. But honestly, you just gave somebody $1,400 jacket, and yet these people don't know nothing about financial literacy. So we know as a black community how to spend, but not how to save. We know how to we know how to continue to hurt, but we don't know how to heal. But in this music, we're constantly pushing hurt, pain, trauma. But no one is talk D talking about healing. D talking about bringing value to the community and to our youth. Yes, I don't care how much you think you can give to a school. There's a lot of people who gave to our organization back home in Charlotte, and these are people who probably listen. They're not on the right side of the track, but we're gonna take that money and we're gonna do the right thing with it. But if you, is, if it even talks in the Bible, when you talk about, and I don't, I don't, care, I don't know where it is, but when it would talk about giving, a person who have a lot to give, it means nothing, but a person have very little give, it means everything. I don't know where that is in the Bible, but it's in the Bible somewhere. It talks about a woman that had, uh, gave two, two mites. mites. Yeah. And then it talks about uh, the Pharisees who gave from their abundance. Come on. And so when you look at our, like Archivius Armstrong, who's giving with very little, creating programs. I'm in the schools all week. Every day I'm in high schools and alternative schools. And we're not going in a talk. We're providing solution-based programs that's giving in and that's teaching and that's exposing. It's proven fact. Look up stepuptoleadership.com, S-U-T-L-N-C.org. Go to our social media page. Google me. You're going to see a lot. Like you'll probably see something this week. And we just have other opportunities. We're partnering with banks, other big organizations. My wife would tell you, we just got awarded $50,000 in grant money. You don't see me in the club smoking weed. You don't see me walking around here sagging. You don't see me on the corner selling dope or smoking dope or talking with. No, you don't see that. I am trying to pull out so I can expose you too. So when you go back to your reality, I want it to hurt. I don't want it to feel good. I don't want you to be comfortable. I want you to look at your situation and realize I'm going to get up out of this. But if I go to you with all the gold chains and all the diamonds and, and I go to my social media page and I'm always showing the lavish life, then what I'm teaching you. 
So it's nothing what these guys are really saying and doing that's helping the black community nor the youth. So what D1 said, it was truth. Wow. It was truth. Wow. Um, I, I wanted to ask you another thing, you know, being that you was abused as a young man, uh, going through uh, being sexually abused. Yeah. To see what is going on with P. Diddy and Cassie. Yeah. And just that whole situation where women are coming back now years later. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and they're and they're and they're coming back and they're saying, hey, man, you know, this happened to me uh, to these prestigious people. That, yeah. You know, there's two or three things I'm thinking as I talk about this. Like, um, what is the what? What do you see from that? Like, is this something that is this justifiable? Is this a game? What if, What are we dealing with here? Because I'm just looking at how it's it's a trend. Like, like for people to come now, yeah. come forward. They made it a thing to where even in New York, where this law pretty much p- cocoon the situation. Mm. Mm-hmm. And said you can come now, and by this time, I think it was November the twenty fourth. Cap on it. Yeah, you can't come no more. Yeah, like is this a really is this is this the harsh reality we live in today, where people are capping off people's frustration? Whether if, if there was abuse, then that's a bad thing, and if there wasn't abuse, then this is a game that's being played. Right. What are we dealing with? Well, money. Well, that's what we're dealing with. It is a money grab. Um, in the everyday life, this is not even the African American. This is not just blacks. This is life. Um, there's a young girl right now that's 15, 16 years old sleeping with an older man. That's been going on ever since I can remember. Um, you know, we've seen that a lot in our communities growing up. You know what I mean? Little Kiki was in the, in, in the van with Mr. Charles. That ain't nothing new. That, that's been going on. And so most people knew little Charles was messing with little girls. They knew, they knew Mr. Leroy liked to fondle around with little boys. You know what I mean? But Mr. Leroy would probably get little Antoine a pair of Jordans. You know what I mean? The mom didn't care because the mom ain't always at the house, so she don't know where where little little man got his new shoes from. Or where Kiki get the new Reebok classes from and she constantly having her hair done and and she keep wearing little her clothes getting shorter and shorter and shorter. That's been going on. This is all about money. If R. Kelly wasn't R. Kelly, nothing would have been brought up. If Bill Cosby wasn't Bill Cosby, nothing would have been brought up if 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 P. Diddy wasn't P. Diddy. Nothing would be brought up. The fact that these people, even not, not just black, you're talking about um, the Weinstein, what was the other, the other yeah, guy? Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, all of these people got people above them that's been doing them. These people been exposed to it. You know, and, and when you look at, like, even the molestations that I had to deal with, um, when I was seven years old, I was seven years old, I was molested every single night by a woman. Every single night. You know what I mean? I was fond of the weird a couple of times by a different man, but those were situations when I was like six, seven, eight years old and I'm in and out these crack houses with my mom while she getting high. Your baby boy upstairs, such and such, done probably rubbed on me a little bit. And out of fear, I ain't going to say nothing. And that's the problem out of fear. Most people don't say nothing. There's somebody right now that's probably going to watch this interview that's going to be like, man, I used to get fond of it by my uncle. You know what I mean? There's people right now that, that, that used to get molested every single day by friends down the street. Out of fear, you're not going to say nothing. This stuff been going on. Right now, what we're witnessing, honestly, is a money grab. A money grab. That's a money grab. Now, all it takes is one person. That's all it takes. It takes one person to step out and be bold to talk about it. Regardless if it's a money grab or not, it takes one person to to cause the table to shake for other people. It's like, you know what? I'm going to come from up under that table. You know what? I I'm, I'm want to confess to it was done to me too. Honestly, I, I beg people, come forth. Because the fact of the matter is holding on to these type of experiences only causes more trauma. It causes more pain and hurt. That's why most families can't even get together to today because there are some things that's done happen within that family that can't everybody get around each other. Like that's been going on. But when you look at like some of the stuff like <clears throat> Aaron Hall, uh, they oh talk about my him, God. You know, how he said he come in behind everybody and, oh. uh, you know, and he he basically uh, speaking <laughs> out about the fact of those nights wouldn't be Diddy and them got to see him do his thing like he he was <laughs> letting everybody know that hey man you know I guess it done you know I'm yeah. out here I, I really they know I got the big boy coming right. in the big boy package talking about his jump yeah. you know like like 
these are things that prove that there was some things going on when you listen to the conversation. Oh, yeah. Or was there? Or are these guys younger too? You got to think about the age span too. These guys, think they, they're talking 20 some years ago. Cameron just came forward and talked about him doing something with different that. girls. Yeah. And then he said, but 16. I was young. You know, yeah. um, there's a thin line. We got the media base, right? We got, we got this social media. We got the internet. Yeah. And and basically, people are saying things, and people are misconstruing some of these messages, right. and taking them and using them to try to uh, incriminate people, bro. Right. Well, here's the thing. You know, um, you know, when you're when you're, what are you what are you coming out about? What are you using that information for? What awareness are you trying to bring forth? Um, and you know, and that's the thing that I honestly truly believe that you know, when you look at the camera, bro, I was having sex. Again, I was molested every single night, right? Um, when you look at the fact that I started having fully sex, I was 11 and 12 years old. Um, and so these these are the type of things, you know, and we was having sex, you know, I was 17, 18, having sex with 30-something-year-old women. So, you know, on both spectrums, it's not just men with girls. There's women out there who actually do it, has been doing it, but no one is talking about it. You know, that's where I feel like there is... is, is, is it's not a fair playing ground. A woman can a woman can look at a little boy right now. If you walk your son here, a grown woman can say, oh my God, he is so handsome. Oh, he's gonna take all the ladies. Oh, you better be careful when I when you get older. And we'll laugh about it. But let a man look at a little girl that's three years old and say, Oh my God, she's gonna be fine when she get old. We're gonna look at it like you nasty. So it's like it's been going on on both sides forever. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you know, what I mean, our young girls used to get raped by slave masters at 12 and 13 years old. So it's been tolerated. It's been accepted. It's been pushed out there. And now we're living in the times now. It's just even worse because you got the sexy reds. Whoa. That's a whole nother. You got the Cardi B's. You got the Megan Thee Stallions. You got uh, uh, the Sookies. You got all of these women pushing this this propaganda and this this theory on young girls on what you need to look like to be beautiful, what you need to sound like to be accepted, what you need to act like to be a boss. And it's just like, and I'm a father of four daughters. I got all girls. And I'm sitting here looking at it from a different perspective. Like, no, we're pushing this and we're forcing this on our generation, even for the boys. You know what I mean? I don't have nothing against no, whatever your gender are, whatever you like, but you can't even go take your kids to go watch a movie with them pushing LGBTQ or any like this, that. Like whatever a person want to be, let them be. You look at the Dwayne Ways and how they like, come on, this young boy shouldn't have been given that that authority. Bible. Listen, whatever you say you are, I respect that. I might have to love you for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting behind you and pushing this. And so that's the thing that we have to understand as a as a as a community, as parents. And as a as an influence, how much power we really have. Wow. Dope interview, man. Love what you're saying. You had a lot of great valid points. Uh, real quick with it, too. Yeah. You, you you gifted when it come down to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's power in the tongue. Come right? on, man. Yeah, pause. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, That's a, listen, and let me tell you something about that. <laughs> I, have, I have an organization There's where pause. we mentor hundreds of boys, yeah. 100 boys a year. And a lot of our young men are from like 13 on up to 18. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be careful what you say. We play basketball a lot. I'm like, I Right, somebody go get the ball. Come on, Mr. Armstrong, pause. I'm like, come on. Can you say anything now without it being a pause? But it, it adds some humor to it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But but absolutely, man, there is power in the tongues. And I always tell people, you have a choice. You either can speak life or you can speak death. Choose what you choose to speak from out of what the mouth God gave you. And so I honestly choose to speak life. But I not just choose to speak life. I show you through my examples how I walk it. That's the problem. People's words is not matching their walk. That's, again, what D1 was saying. Your, your, your walk, what you're saying, ain't matching the words you're saying. You have to understand that your words now really don't mean nothing. We grew up where it say, hey, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. That doesn't exist. Now is I'm going to do as you do because what you're telling me I shouldn't do, you ain't doing it. Yeah. How you telling me I shouldn't do something and you're doing it?
Wow. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Come on, man. Uh, let's talk about where this organization is again. How can people get on? Man, listen, it is Step Up to Leadership. It's in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's also in Cabarrus, North Carolina. We've been in four different counties, probably over 12 different high schools and middle schools, um, community uh, workshops, empowerment sessions, summer camps, um, educational. Man, it's just, we're doing a lot of great work, but Charlotte, North Carolina is where we at. Man, people, y'all been asking for it, but we got him here. Archivis Armstrong back in the building with a motivation speech for you. He has definitely uh, came and showed out uh, all the way here from by way of North Carolina. North Carolina. And uh, the guy's dope, man, and God sent him to us early on, and here he is still Come with on. us today, man. We thank God for him. Um, man, thank you for coming on the show. We love no, you. No, man. I love y'all, and I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you saying always, you're welcome man. on this show. And yeah. you ain't getting too big, bro, that you ain't humble enough to say, listen, mm-mm. <laughs> Our platform is nah. still available for people. That, that yeah. that's the way it got to be, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the ones who God put in our life, we 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 understood the assignment. Yeah, and that's what we're here for, man. Right. So right. thank you so much, man. Hey, man. Guess what, Miss Jamaica? Wah-wah. You didn't say much this time. <laughs> Matter of fact, Archivius took it and he ran with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we gave him the ball. Come on, he man. ran with it. Come on, like, it, like, man. Hold on, like them Cowboys gonna do hey! the Eagles tomorrow. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> That's why I'm in Dallas, baby. Hey. I am gonna be in that. Listen, I'm gonna be in that stadium tomorrow. It's gonna be stupid. I can't wait, man. Oh my god! Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.